So welcome to episode 11 in this ongoing series where we're building a web application in Flutterflow. We are now gonna start looking at component callbacks. These are gonna be super important because we're gonna now want to create our colored sticky notes within inside our application. So if you've been following along and you've been learning lots, thank you for being part of this series. Let's get into the episode and let's get cracking. Okay, so let's start adding some interactivity then to our little colored circles that appear on the left hand side. We want to be able to select the relevant one to the color that we would like and we want to see that sticky note created with that color on the right hand side. And of course that will then set us up quite nicely then when we start to then put our sticky note into an edit mode to then for us to start keying in the details. We can then hit the save and then of course those details will then get persisted. So let's firstly just tidy ourselves up a little bit because our note component component is currently a little bit on its own. We need to move that into the components folder. So let's just drag that into components so they're nicely grouped together. Let's now have a look then at our note.component. Let's remind ourselves to kind of what we had here. So if you remember, we created this on circle tap action. Now, this particular component is quite a dumb component. It doesn't really do a huge amount. Now, what we want to do is we want to get into a position where as soon as the user uh, sort of selects that circle dot, the one what happens is, is we then invoke what's called a callback. We then tell the parent widget here, which is going to be the component itself. This is the parent component, which is our, our, our kind of our note selector component that we've now pressed on that particular uh, sort of circle. And what that will then do is that will then invoke some actions on that parent component. So the way that we do that is that we, um, we've got that action all in place. We did that last time. So what we can do is we can go to the circle container here, select that, and we can move up to the the actions here, just select that, click on the action flow editor. And there's one single action that we need to do here. We just say add action. We move up here and we just say execute like that. Just type that in and there's execute callback. Hit that. And then now, of course, we can select the only callback component parameter that we've got created, which as you recall from a few episodes ago was called on circle tap action. Hit that. And then that will then invoke that callback as soon as that is selected. So what we'll do is I'll show you in just a moment how we then configure up the actions that would then get invoked from clicking on that uh, that particular option there and then invoking that callback. And we're going to go and set that up very, very shortly. So that's pretty well much this component. It, there's really not a lot to it. Uh, and that sets us up now quite nicely now to work outside of this com component back into our note selector component. And we can now start looking at invoking those actions. So let's go and do that now. Okay then, so on the left hand side, we have all of our note dot components here. You can see them all nicely listed here. And of course, they're all duplicates of one another, so that's fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the functionality working on one of them, and then we can copy all of that functionality then to the exist to all the rest of the components basically, and we can then just update them slightly with the colors. So let's focus on the note dot one component, just with that selected. On the right hand side, you can see here, we've now got this on circle tap action. As you recall, this is a component parameter on that particular component, and of course, we've now because it's of an action type we've now got our own action flow editor against that component parameter so just hit the open here you can see at the top it just says callback and we can now just as we do anywhere else we can now start applying actions now instead of us doing this from hand what we're going to do is we're going to copy a load of actions that we've got associated with the actual plus button here at the top here so this little button here now if you remember when we when we press that once all of our dots will get then displayed. When we press it again, the animations will get reversed and they then disappear. Now we want to take that disappearing set of actions, okay, on the animation of those particular components. So um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit on the little plus here. We're gonna go to the action flow editor and it's in this area here are all of our reverse animations. You can see that they're all reversed here and you can see that they count down from five, four, three, two, etc. So we're gonna hit the little option here and we're gonna copy that action tag the the action chain to hit copy just close that and we're going to go then back to our note dot one component just select that go down to our on circle tap action here and then we can now paste all of these actions in so just hit the little paste and they're all in there now this is all perfect just as we want it we're not going to need to make any changes to that at all but what we now need to do we also need to replicate the same functionality with then another 
action. Now, if you remember, we have this toggle and this toggle is a component. If I move down here, if I say the new note selector, you can see here there's actually a uh, local state variable here called is new note dots visible. So it's that toggle of true and false. We also need a copy um, that also into our action. We need, a, we need a toggle that value as well, just as we do up here. So with that selected, just go back to our note dot one component. Let's go down to the actions down the bottom here. Just move up here. Let's add that in here. So just say add action. Just, just type in state here and just update the component state. Select the set fields here. And this is the only one that we've got available. So say is new notes just visible. And of course, all we need to simply do is toggle it because we know that it's going to be uh, true at that point when they're all displayed. So by toggling it, it's going to reverse it to false. And of course, the animation would have played out by then. But then at least we've got that right back to the state that we need. So that is um, all good for us. So what we can now do, I can close this. We can now actually quickly run this up. Let's give this a quick test. We know that all of these aren't going to work, but this one will do. And we should see that behavior of everything collapsing back up. We'll be able to press on the little plus again, and we'll be able to just keep repeating that. We should get the look that we need within inside our UI. So I'm just going to go to test mode now, and let's give that a quick whirl. OK, so here we are in test mode. Hit the little plus here and we know that none of these are going to work for us. I can click on these and nothing is going to happen whatsoever. But the first one should collapse, which it does. I can hit the little plus and then, of course, it will then display. Hit that again. It will close. Now, of course, we're not creating any stickies at this particular point, but we're getting that functionality in place that handles the behavior here of this particular component. So that's great. Let's now move on to the next bit. OK, so this is where it gets a little bit more interesting because now we are going to create our first sticky note. So with the note dot one component, let's just move over here, move again over to the on circle tap actions, hit the open here, just move this up to the bottom. And this is the point that we need to do it. So what we now need to do, we need to create a brand new instance of our sticky note. Remember, we created that custom data type previously. Well, we're going to now need to use that in this particular case. So what we now need to do is we need to create a brand new instance of an empty sticky note and we need to insert it into our app state variable. And remember, we've created that app state variable that contains all of our sticky notes. Now, we've got one in there because we've added it in by hand. But when this application runs for the first time, there's going to be no sticky notes in there whatsoever. So we're going to insert a brand new empty sticky note in position zero. Do you remember, we're talking about kind of index positions. So we're going to insert it at position zero. So by doing that every single time, we're always going to add a brand new sticky note at the very, very beginning of the very top of our list. OK, so hit the little plus here. Let's go to add action. And this one we're going to look for is just going to do a search for state and we're going to select update app state. So we are going to access our variable, which is, of course, an app state variable. Again, it's spread across the whole of our application. It's accessible by the, from the, the, anywhere in our application. Hit the set fields here. Now we're going to choose the notes list here. You can just select that there. And now we need to say a select update type. If I just select that and now we want to now add to the list. So choose add to list and we're going to go to value to add. So just hit the little selector here and we've got this create a data type object. Now, it's the only one that we've got in here, which is our notes. So just select that. So now we've got that in that position. We now need to say, well, OK, well, what fields do you want to set? Now, if you remember back a little while ago when we was creating the schema, there was this one called is new and that's that is new that we now need to set to be true. So if I just go to the field here, so it's going to pick out all of the fields that we've got with inside our custom data type. We've got this one called is new and we just need to set this to true. And we're going to need this a little bit further on because when our sticky note is created for the first time, we're not going to want to display just some some text widgets because there's no detail to, to, to display at that time. What we want to do is we want to actually show some input fields. So we are going to work on the conditional builder with inside the sticky note. It's going to say if that is is new and it's true, then we want to show on screen the actual input text fields instead of just the text widgets that just that actually displays the content. So that's why that needs to be set as true. Now, of course, when we then uh, are looking at sticky notes in gen general, th it's not going to be is new. Is new is going to be false every single time. So, of course, we're just going to see then those text widgets. So just keep that thought for now and we'll come back to that very, very shortly.
So next up, we need to also add some additional fields in here. So just hit the add field here. If I just scroll down here, select here the create data. So I can just notice one little thing in Flutterflow. As you add these actually in there, it starts reducing that list, which is quite a little handy thing. It just it means that we're not seeing repeated values to select. So hit the little create date. Now with the value, we can now move into this particular area here. We can go back to we can go to global properties. This is something that's available to us. Now we now need to to set this as the current date. Okay, so right here right now so if we set the global properties here and you can see the only one i've got available here is current time so just select that and hit confirm and we now know that our sticky note will now have the current date and time associated with it hit the add field again and we now need to now select the actual color. So I'm just gonna scroll that down here. Now with the field, we now need to set the actual color. Now we know this is the first sticky note that we've actually got available to us. Now we need to obviously determine the right color to select there. Now we know we created these constants previously. So if it's if it's the first circle with inside that note selector, we know it's gonna be the very first note color. So if I just select the little value here, we can now go back into our constants and we can now set the note color one. Now, of course, when you come to do this again, and we copy this action chain into all of those other ones. We need, we need to set it to then two, three, four, five. That's the, the one of the main changes we need to do. So now that is done, that's everything that we need there. Just hit confirm. That is brilliant. So that's now going to create a brand new instance of our sticky note. It's going to add it to the application state variable. Um, we'll come back and we'll test that very, very shortly. OK, so before you dart off and you hit the test mode and expect to see a brand new sticky note added by hitting the little circle, well, that's not going to quite happen in this occasion. Now, although we have created this update app state action, this created a entry within inside our application state list. What we've not done is we've not actually told our application to do a bit of a refresh, kind of upstate the kind of rebuild the component state or the application state of our application. And so we need to do that. So what we need to do is we go up to the close up here and on our new note selector component, we need to create a brand new component parameter. And this is just going to be of action. So what we're going to do is we're then going to execute a callback on that action, which will then perform one simple action execution on our home page to kind of just do a bit of a rebuild of the application, which ultimately then will show our sticky note. So um, if you followed along with that, here we go. So just with the new note selector component selected, just go up to the plus here. Let's add a new parameter in and let's give our parameter a name. So on add note action like that. And then with our type, just select that. And of course, this is just going to be quite simply action just down the bottom here. And uh, we don't need it to be required. So we can just take that off here and just hit confirm like that. So now that's all in place. Let's go to the home page, select that. Let's go down here. Into, in fact, I'll tell you what, before we do that, let me um, let me just show you what actually happens in test mode. Let's fire that up in test mode. So I could just demonstrate that just so you can see what's happening. So hit the little test option up here. OK, so there it is. It's all up and running. Let's hit the little plus here. Let me show you this, what, what I'm kind of saying here. I'm going to hit this option here and then it disappears. Now, what has actually happened? It has actually created that sticky note. So what will happen is, is we'll go back and we'll crack this and you're going to see then two empty sticky notes. We're going to come back here and add another one. We also need to remove that one out in just a second. So let's go back into Flutterflow and let's go and crack this now. So on our home page, then select the new note selector here. And of course, down here, we've now got this brand new component parameter. Hit the open here. And what we need to do is hit the add action. And all we're going to do here is do a little search for state again and just click on the update app state. That's all that we're going to do. The update type here is to, uh, to, is to actually re rebuild the actual current page. So it's going to force that rebuild of the page for us. And ultimately, that will then display this particular sticky note. So if I just hit close there. OK, so let's execute that callback. So with the uh, new note selector, let's go over to the new note selector component there. Hit on the new note dot one there and move over to the actions. Hit the open. Let's just scroll this down here. And we hit a little plus here and say add action. And so let's type in execute like that we say execute callback and we just need to select the callback that we need the on add no action so that's all in place now there's one other little mistake that i made a little bit oh, a little bit of a while ago you may have spotted this because we were talking about inserting the sticky note at position zero in the index well i inadvertently put add to list here now what that's going to do is that's going to actually add the sticky note at the end 
of our application state list that's containing all of those stickies, but we actually want to insert it at this position zero. So we need to make a little correction where it says add to list. If you just change this now to insert at index, now we can say zero here, because as we said before, that our indexes are a zero index based this so position it right at the very beginning. But what's happened here, of course, is Flutterflow has gone and removed what we created earlier. So we need to actually put that back in. So just with the little selector, we want to select the note here. We want to add the field again. We're just going to do what we did before. So just select the is new and just say this is now going to be true. Let's add, add the field again. Let's just move down to description. Let's select, select the color here and we can set this to be then our, our actual constant value here. So it's going to be the note color one and then just hit confirm and the final one to add in, just add the field. In. Oh, whoops. There we go. Click to a little bit too quick. Move back to that. <laughs> Let's go back down here and I go to add field and, uh, and then change from a description to create date. And of course, we just want to select the uh, the the uh, global property and say the current time. So apologies that we've had to go back over and do that again. But that should all now be in place for us now to uh, quickly test this out. So let's go and do that now. So we go. So we've got our empty sticky note that we created before. Let's hit the little plus here hit the little circle and there we go. Sticky note is added at the beginning. So we need to go and tidy this up a little bit so we can quickly move over to the app state now. Let's get rid of this particular one here. So let's just close back outside of the actions. Let's go to our application state here, move back over to the notes. We've got this list here. If you remember, we added we added this one in previously, hit the little delete there, that's gone. We can go back over to test mode now. Let's give that a bit of a refresh. Okay, hit the instant reload. We'll probably have to go back into our actual uh, our local storage actually of our browser and just clear out those notes that we've got in there that's loaded. So we can just test it right from scratch again. I'll show you how to do that in uh, in just a moment once that's come up. Okay, so there it is. So it's still it's still persisted at the moment. So just hit the, if you're in um, Google Chrome, just hit F12 there. Let's just move this up here, and you can see here that we've got this application tab selected here, and then I've got this FF dash debug selected on the left hand side. So just go into your local storage section here. Now, of course, if you depending if you've loaded, you might not have it at the bottom. You might have it up at the right hand side. Just go onto the FF debug, and if you look down here, you can see that this is where all of the notes are currently stored. So here they are, FF notes. So what we can do, we can just simply right click on this and just say delete. Now that, if, as soon as I do a refresh now, if I just close that back down here, just do the reload here, you'll find I'll, I'll start with a clean slate here of no sticky notes into the persisted as browser storage. There we go. So this is exactly what we need. So if you ever are testing this, then just go in and just delete those out. Hit the little plus here. Let's create the sticky note by hitting that there. And there's our brand new sticky note created. So everything is in good place for us to then start working on the UI a little bit more. OK, so now we've pretty well much got the template of our actions. We can now apply those now to the remaining components we've got on the left hand side. So just move down here on the right hand side with the with the first one selected. Just hit open. We can go up here. We can actually now copy the action chain. So who choose copy? Let's close that. Let's move down to the second one here. Just move down onto this one just down here and then let's paste the action chain in there. We can just move up here now. Let's move down to the update app state here. So this is where we actually create the sticky note. If you remember, hit the created note, just move down here to then the color, just select the little option here, just select the value option there. And we just need to hit the little pen here for edit. And we can now choose the second one in the list. So just choose number two there, hit confirm. And we'll now get that new fresh color to that particular sticky note, hit confirm. So all we need to do now is just just do exactly the same thing. Just kind of copy this now and then let's move into the next one. And then, of course, the next one and then the next one. So you just carry on doing that and then set those constant values until we get to that one there. I'm going to quickly do that now. So set that to no color five, hit confirm, hit confirm, just close that down and we should be good to go. So there's just one more thing that we need to do. Then we need to actually apply that no color to our actual component itself. So with the, the note color uh, component selected here on the left hand side, you can see we've got this kind of solid kind of bluey kind of color. So just with the note container selected, let's just scroll down here. And you can see we kind of got that fill color just applied there. Hit the little selector. Let's move down here. You can see we've got the component parameters here. We can select a note there. We can say available options and we can then say data structure fill because going into that, that kind of custom data type schema, select the field that we need. You, you know that we've kind of got the color 
color option available. So just select color and then just hit confirm. Now that is now going to be dynamically set. So that's it. We're all good to go now. Let's fire up the test mode and hopefully, fingers crossed, we should see um, some examples of the colors being applied. Okay, so I've cleared all my sticky notes out. I'm in test mode, hit the little plus. Let's try now choosing a color. Let's try the red one. There we go, that's a color applied, hit the little plus. Let's try changing this to the blue there. And then we can just, for good measure, choose all of these particular colors. And you can see now that they're all perfectly playing out. So we are in a good position now. We're ready to now move into the next episode where we're just gonna carry on working on this UI now. We're gonna add more interactivity in. We've got some fresh widgets there to introduce you in the next episode as well. So um, please do like the video, of course, and please do subscribe to my channel. And of course, if you're not a member of the No code academy please do check out the link in the description It'd be great to have you part of the community so until the next episode i'll see you soon